Um, with this presentation and the real life demo, I will show you uh, some of the functions that Trace provides to you and how to use them with UDE. Um, I will focus on uh, trace-based debugging and trace-based profiling in the demonstration. If you are interested in trace-based code coverage, I'd like to invite you to join the specific session on that topic. So let's get started. Um, in general, trace is very useful if you need a deep insight into the runtime behavior of your embedded application. You can basically observe the execution of code, of functions, uh, of complete tasks if a operating system is involved, or you can even um, observe the data transfers over buses. One of the key features with Trace is that you can do it completely non-intrusive. That means without any influence on the runtime behavior of your application. In other words, you can debug without interrupting the target system. Typically, you can run your target at full speed and you can measure even timings very accurately using Trace. To make use of the trace functions, you need, of course, a target device with on-chip trace. There are a lot of devices on the market which provides these options. For example, the uh, Infineon Oryx with MCDS. For that device, you need a specific um, emu so-called emulation device to get the trace option. For ARM, there are a lot of of Cortex-based devices that provide a more or less powerful trace options. The keyword here is um, Coreside ETM uh, or PTM. ETM stands for uh, Embedded Trace Macro Cell um, and PTM for Program Trace Macro Cell. And also uh, devices um, from the power architecture uh, that comes, for example, from ST or NXP provide trace support based on Nexus. Um, here, uh, Nexus class three is the keyword. From the tool side, you need a trace license for the specific target system for UDE and a UAD from our access device families that provides support for the specific trace hardware. Which device is, uh, is suiting to your target depends on the on-chip trace capability of your target system. If there is an on-chip trace memory on the target device available, then even the smallest device of our access device family, the UD2 Pro can be used. For targets without an on-chip trace memory, you need an external trace memory and a dedicated trace interface to get the data out of the chip. The devices UAD2 Next and UAD3 Plus are then devices of your choice. Both access devices, the UD2 Next and the 3 Plus, support dedicated trace interfaces with either plug-in modules or specific trace ports that are dedicated for the trace interfaces. Both devices have a, 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 a trace memory on board, which is 512 megabyte for the UD2 Next and up to uh, four gigabyte uh, right now, and in the future, eight gigabyte uh, with the UAD 3 Plus. So I will not go into the details about the feature set in this uh, in my slides now. I think uh, you will get a better overview if I show them to you in the real life demo. But before I start with the demo, let me say a few words about the use cases for Trace. So the first use case is basically trace-based debugging, and the second one is trace-based measurement and runtime analysis. The trace-based debugging 
is useful if you try to find bugs that are, for example, caused by parallel execution or by timing problems. In general, whenever the debugger accesses would possibly hide such kind of bugs. In a nutshell, you can use trace-based debugging if you have to avoid any influence on the runtime behavior by the debug tool. Another use case is whenever you need more than only a snapshot of the target state. For example, if you are on a breakpoint, then you have a snapshot of the target state, uh, but you can't go back uh, or look back in uh, time. Um, so with Trace, basically, you can go back in time and have a look at uh, the history, for example, of a, of a uh, malfunction. Trace-based measurement covers all the functions uh, that are useful to analyze the runtime behavior itself. For example, code coverage, profiling, core graph analysis, even the visualization of the program executions are examples for these functions. And again, uh, with Trace, uh, these functions are very accurate in terms of the measured timings, as well as they are also um, comes without any influence on the runtime behavior during the measurement. So now I would like to finally start with the promised demo. Uh, for this demo, I will use a Oryx uh, from Infineon with MCDS trace and a UAD2 Pro. You can see an example of the hardware setup that is uh, quite similar to that what I have on my desktop. Uh, the traces are here in this example recorded into the internal trace memory of the Oryx and then transferred using the device access port DAP, which is the Infineon specific debug interface to the tool. The UD2 Pro, which I use, uh, has no trace memory um, on board. Um, everything is stored at the target and transferred after the trace recordings uh, to the tool. So uh, let's get started. I have already opened the UDE. I have loaded a application uh, and the application is uh, already running. You see uh, there are some variables here uh, changing. And the first thing I'd like to show you is uh, a example of trace-based debugging. Um, there is a, um, I can tell the application to hit a trap. I do that now. Uh, I have set a breakpoint here in the trap handler. And you see we are now in the trap handler. And uh, it's very often uh, you will, be ask yourself uh, what was the reason for the trap. So you can look at the registers uh, of the uh, of the tricore of, of the Aurix and um, get a hint um, about the trap reason, but not the real trap reason. So um, the uh, a good way is to use trace here in in this example to um, observe anything. Uh, happening before the trap occurs. And for that, I uh, start the application again. The trap is resolved, okay. And I open the trace. So trace window is, is empty, which uh, is uh, a list of uh, every executed instructions uh, once we have uh, recorded the trace. And the first step I want uh, I have to do is to configure the trace for a specific trace task. For that, I open the trace configuration. And this is our configuration tool, which um, provides um, a interface to configure the MCDS uh, from the, the Oryx device. On the right, uh, on the left side, we have a library of um, predefined, um, yeah, um, yeah, small tasks uh, that can be uh, composed to a more complex or complete trace configuration on the right side in this uh, empty panel here. So I do this. Uh, the first uh, configuration block uh, I need is the initialization block where I 
uh, tell the debugger how many space uh, or trace memory uh, it should be spent for recording the trace. And the second uh, important thing is the trigger. The trigger is basically a pin mark into the ring buffer of the trace memory, and I can um, set it to uh, to uh, three different modes. Uh, I uh, change this to the so-called post trigger mode. That means everything uh, before a certain condition occurs is recorded, and the trace ha uh, has to be stopped uh, if the condition occurs. And then we need the condition, of course. Uh, I take this block here, which um, allows us to configure a condition based on a code address. I can select, um, for example, the trap handler here. And then um, everything is finished for now. So the trace method is branch only. That means only branches are traced to save a, a little bit trace memory. Uh, everything in between can be reconstructed by the debugger, and we don't need any timing information for now. So then I start the trace. And uh, once the trace is started, you see uh, the recording is, uh, is active. I do the trap again, and then we see, okay, automatically the trace has been stopped and analyzed. And so and now I go to the trigger condition at the very end, and I see here uh, we have a uh, indication of an interrupt or a trap in this case. And then from this point, we can look back um, in the code execution and um, look for something suspicious. In this case, uh, here is a, uh, a access, uh, a right access to a variable. It looks promising for the for the error, and then we see can we can jump to the code and see okay this is an illegal address uh, for a right address, and this is the the root cause of the trap. Okay, so that's a very simple um, example for the um, um, for trace based debugging. So let's switch to trace based measurement. For that, I change the perspective of UDE to a other perspective uh, containing some other windows here. Um, this perspective is uh, very useful for profiling capabilities. So change the, uh, the, uh, the configuration here. I load a new task. I want to do a profiling. So the task looks quite the same, um, the, um, except uh, now we start the trace at a certain condition. Uh, by the pre-trigger, and we spend uh, much more trace memory here for that. And the trace method is different. The Oryx has a very nice feature that is uh, called Compact Function Trace, and this trace allows you to uh, save uh, only uh, calls and returns of uh, the executed code, and that saves uh, very much uh, uh, trace memory. So. Um, now I can start the trace recording. Application is still running. And uh, once we recorded the trace, we can analyze the trace. So we have here a diagram or a, a, a chart view called execution sequence chart, um, which gives us a good overview uh, about the executed um, the executed um, instructions or the executed functions. You see, we have a timeline here. Um, we see we have a traced um, uh, four task functions, one 10 millisecond, one 15 millisecond, 50 millisecond, 100, 200. And we see here, in this timeline, um, there is something wrong with the timing. I can zoom in a little bit and you see this 50 millisecond task took too long and the 10 millisecond task getting the chance uh, to be executed. This is a very stupid uh, scheduler here. I think uh, operating systems would, would uh, do much better, but uh, for now, uh, it is a good example to show you the profiling functionality. 
So you can do uh, now a more deeper analysis uh, using our core graph window, which is uh, already opened here. I select core one because uh, I traced for core one. Did, uh, I forgot to mention that. And uh, also start the analysis. The core graph view um, provides us two different types of information. The first information is the call hierarchy of uh, the functions. Uh, you see which function was called by which other function uh, uh, and how often. And the second information we get is a profiling. Um, so this can be sorted uh, by the next time. And I see, okay, the task 50 millisecond um, took sometimes 12 millisecond and that, that's too long. Um, and now it's time to analyze that. So for analyzing that, you can also use trace. I'd like to show you a more complex trace configuration. I have to reset target to make it work and then I switch back to the trace configuration and load another one which is also um, which I have also prepared before and it looks more complicated but uh, at the end it does uh, the following it uh, looks or it observes the execution of the milli, uh, five, uh, 50 millisecond task and uh, stops the trace as soon uh, a threshold of uh, three milliseconds has been um, expired. And if I start this configuration again, application is running, and then um, the trace has been stopped automatically. I go to the very end to the to the trigger. I see here we have. Uh, three milliseconds reached and it was uh, expired and this was our trigger condition in this case and if I go to the function then I see okay we have here uh, a task 500 mil we are here in in this while loop uh, which uh, obviously takes too long and we have to change for example the input variables here to make it shorter I just have a very simple example to show you uh, this feature. Okay, and if I change, for example, um, this variable here, this is the take to five and uh, change the trace recording or change the trace configuration back to the uh, to the profiling one. Start this and um, start analysis, you will finally see that we are now fine with our scheduling. Here we are. And also, if we um, start the Profiling analysis, you will see that we are now uh, own, uh, have a maximum execution time of the um, of the task 50 milliseconds of about three milliseconds. 